From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss the power of owned media assets and unique data. Joining us is Shay Howe, who is the CMO of Active Campaign, which is a Cloud 100 industry-leading marketing automation platform with 185,000 customers around the world. They focus on simple but powerful automation functionality for SMBs, like us here at the MarTech Podcast. And today, Shay and I are going to discuss the power of owned media assets. All right, here's the first part of my conversation with Shay Howe, the CMO of ActiveCampaign. Shay, welcome to the MarTech Podcast. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. We are ecstatic to have you, a representative from ActiveCampaign. It's a tool that I personally and everyone here have a ton of respect for, a mainstay in marketing, MarTech, automation, all the good things. How exciting. Great to have you here. Yeah, thank you. I'm biased, but I am also a big fan of Active Campaign. Use it every day and love it. So yeah, it's, it's fun to be here. Well, there you go. We've got <laughs> plenty in common then. But today we're actually not really talking specifically about the tool Active Campaign, but a little bit about your marketing of a company that serves SMB. I'd say you're an enterprise scale company, but you're probably eating your own dog food and using the SMB centric tools. You're responsible for marketing the company, and specifically, I want to talk to you about the power of owned media assets. How do you think about what is owned, earned, paid? What's the mix look like for you, and why is owned so damn important? I think the the idea of owned is even growing importance, honestly. And we can dig a bit deeper into what that is or why that means. But for us, owned is on the lens of things we control, right? It becomes the idea of what's our website, what's our blog, what's our email list or broader subscriber list. Maybe that's through SMS or other channels. But the areas we have more direct control and influence over. The idea of that becoming critical, though, is just watching the landscape of marketing actually fundamentally change. You've probably felt or experienced this, as I'm sure plenty of the listeners have, where there's a lot of updates happening across different algorithms. Google's changing some of their makeup from becoming what is an index where you can go find answers to questions by clicking through the links to honestly focusing on what is that zero-click result where they can just give you an answer. LinkedIn has changed their algorithm quite a bit significantly. So I'm seeing impressions drop for different folks across that. And even just the cost of paid search or paid social is increasing. So those areas, you don't have all the control you might want over those channels and they can change pretty dynamically. So the idea of own for us is the things we control, the things we can set up ourselves and have direct influence over. I guess uh, all I should say is preach. And I'm biased because I run a podcast and I run a podcast production company that serves B2B companies. So I want everybody to invest in creating their own audiences, in building their own content. It's good for business. There's risk in it. As much as we talk about things like performance marketing, the social networks are trying to get you to stop thinking about organic and just buy the traffic. We're seeing limited access to data through some of the privacy changes that Apple is making. Those are like sugar. They're immediate results and owned is not necessarily something that you're driving instant gratification from, from a marketer's perspective. Talk to me about the trade-offs when you think about things like owned, earned, and paid. Owned is wonderful because you own it, you control it, but it's a pain in the butt to build sometimes. It can take a long time to do that. And very specifically, kind of depending on what that channel is. I think the benefits of it is one of, you need to build those direct relationships with your customers, right? Like that line of communication is as tight as it's possibly going to get through an own channel. There's not an intermediary in there kind of influencing that relationship or frankly, controlling how you might show up or engage with them. If you have that direct line of communication, you have more control over the message. 
and you're not in a noisy environment where there might be others, be it your competitors or whatnot, also showing up in some of those same placements. On the own side, you also have a better ability to collect more data about those folks, be it what type of pages are they visiting? What type of engagement do you see across your different own channels? You can use that data in a lot of different ways. We'd go deep into that. And then you just have a broader sense of where you're driving traffic to, right? Like it probably is going back to some of your own channels, be it your website predominantly. I think that what you're saying is owned has a lot of value because access to data, understanding of content, you can be more targeted. Originally, what I was asking is what's the benefits and what are some of the risks of own getting into, well, it can be a pain in the butt to cultivate an owned channel. I guess where we should go from here is let's talk a little bit about more specifically what owned is. You mentioned email. You build an email list. Great. You own that list. Now you have the right to email the people that have opted into communication. SMS, another one. Do you consider content to be an owned channel? Or are you thinking about building blog followers or subscribers or podcast followers, YouTube channels, social media? Like, Does that count as owned for you or are you putting those in the earned bucket? I would put those in the own channels, but I'd also not so granular binary say that's the only place it's going to live. We'll put it into an own channel, but I also think about the distribution of that, which could be through third parties. So we'll cut those up, put those into social networks, get them into YouTube, things like that. So I'd say an own channel where we want the heart of that to be, but it's also as good as its distribution in a lot of different ways. So you're focusing on not only building your own content and active campaign, obviously, you've got a pretty robust email list. I'm sure you have some SMS capabilities as well. Give me some tips, hacks, tools of the trade that you're using to build some of those assets. And is there a way to expedite the growth curve of your own channels? As we think about it, it, one of the areas is just being of value, being personal, and then being creative so that you can stand out. In a way, it's one of a lot of noise. How do you bring someone in? And it's not by being overly promotional, right? It's truly thinking about who's that target audience? What are some other use cases? And how do you bring them in? And for us, we go decently deep on what might be some of the thought leadership we're doing. And as you shared, we have 185,000 customers. So we do a lot of primary original research on top of that customer base to start to understand, hey, what are the segments of customers and how do they use active campaign and what insights or learnings could we take out to folks that would give them ideas of, hey, here's what you can be automating in your business or different ways you might be able to grow. And that information is not just valuable in the sense of, oh, okay, that's good to know. It also is very practical and it becomes applicable and that will also guide and context around, here's how to actually implement that. Here's how you can actually take advantage of that and use that in your business. And if we can do that in a way that is creative and a little eye-catching, it's a way to basically have a value around that that I think allows us to stand out a little bit more than not. So you don't want to be overly salesy with your content, with the way that you're trying to reach your existing customers or your prospects. Totally understand that. Often as marketers, we're thinking about our funnel and we think about that sort of in a, a linear fashion, like a funnel should be going from top to bottom. I guess there's also a flywheel here, which connects your owned, your earned, and your paid. Yes, you can go and you can publish content, and there are algorithms that will help distribute that content, and hopefully people will find you on YouTube, find your podcast, read your blogs. In reality, some of the times you got to get out there. You got to go speak about some of the things that you're doing in an earned media fashion like this. Or maybe you're using paid to enhance or expedite the growth of your owned assets. Tell me a little bit about how you see own, earned, and paid relating to each other. You're nailing it. You can take that thought leadership side and then you think about, okay, how might we distribute that? And you could do that through a number of different channels, one being paid, right? You can start to spread that out and do target audiences through paid channels. Inevitably, all goes well and there isn't a value behind what is in that thought leadership or primary original research side. You pick up the earned media components of it. There's enough value in that some of this. So that's kind of interesting. I want to take some of those insights, some of those learnings. I might write a story about that. It might catch us some publications or get us some folks along the press or media side to start to talk about it. So there is a flywheel and organic connection around all of those where the things we do in our own channels, we want to distribute through social. We can amplify those through paid. A lot of that then starts to drive what we can capture on the earned media side as well. How do you think about the evaluation component of own? I feel like that's always the hardest thing for marketers. It's easy to say, I put $10 into Facebook. I got a customer. Now I know what my CAC is. It's not that simple when you're looking at the value of a blog post. Tell me about your evaluation methodology for your own assets. 
we have a high volume, right? High volume of traffic, high volume of trials, high volume of new customers coming in. So you can start to equate and model out to get to this revenue number based off a of conversion rate, we need to bring in this many customers. And to get to that many customers, we're going to need this many trials, right? So you can back into that. That many trials is going to come from this makeup of website traffic. And that website traffic is going to come from these distributed channels. So we can build out a model and start to basically pin down different levers or mechanics around that. What is the traffic to trial conversion rate or trial to paid conversion rate across different sources? And with that model, we can then more think, or what is the right investment into each of those? And where do we feel we've hit saturation across some of those channels? Where might we introduce a new one, which could be a bit of a wild card that we're not totally sure how it's going to play out. But for us, there's an understanding of what that funnel is. And then what are the levers we want to experiment and test and play with? And that is the game we are continually playing with, right? It's like an impossible question to answer. And everybody has their own methodology for like, here's how I evaluate our content ROI. None of them are super scientific. And I've interviewed, I don't know, 500 people and asked very similar questions and have yet to come up with a consensus answer. I think of it this way. With your earned media, because it's a discrete snapshot in time, I flighted these ads, they generated this result. It's easier to calculate an ROI. It is not a transactional relationship. You're building an asset that grows over time. You're planting seeds and some of them are going to grow and some of them won't. It's like planting your lawn. I don't know if you're a homeowner or not, but <laughs> you throw a ton of seeds in the dirt and a certain percentage of them are going to pop and hopefully they grow enough that it's nice and green and you keep it watered. If you don't, you got a big brown mess in front of your house. It's something that changes over time and requires constant maintenance. How do you think of the maintenance program for your, specifically your content assets? You've got traffic and lists and trials coming out of your ears. Boy, it must be nice. The rest of us don't necessarily have that. And we're creating content to try to drive those initial users and adoption. How do you think about how much content you need, what channels you should be in, how much effort you should be putting into your own assets? On the content side, it is quality over quantity. And then for us, there's different ways to look at that in a sense of most of what we do, we start on the organic side, right? What organic are we trying to rank for? So there's just a research into what is the difference between volume of searches that's getting versus the competitive nature of it. When someone performs that search, what is the intent behind it? What are they actually looking for? What is Google or others starting to actually favor and rank for? So we'll build a lot of our content starting there. But as we're doing it, generally speaking, that research and development of it uncovers a lot of different ideas and insights of, oh, we could start to cut this up and snippet it out into different forms across social to try to build some links back to this content. And that content alone on our website or in a blog post is not going to garner or generate traffic. We think as much about the distribution and promotion of that content as we do the actual creation of it. Honestly, if not more in that. Otherwise, it's somewhat in a vacuum. I tell folks, it's not the field of dreams. It's not if you build it, they will come. You are going to have to put word out behind these items. So for all that we're doing on the content side, it's heavily on the distribution piece as much. You mentioned you're content centric, and it seems like by that written content. And last question, and maybe this is mildly self-serving. How do you think about the difference between what I'll call legacy formats of content, writing blog posts and hoping Google picks it up, as opposed to new media, podcast, video, audio, even short form getting into social? How much do you think about those different channels as well? I think all that just falls into a diversity exercise. I don't want to go all in on one or any of those. I think there's a place and form for written, but if that's all we did, it's not going to check all the boxes. So much of what we do in video is more short form video, often in a vertical portrait mode, if you will, and playing across what might be in different social networks to distribute that. Podcast the same way. If we're on a podcast like this, we're thinking about, hey, let's take that up. And if there's audio or video clips, let's section those up so that we can share that through different social media channels. Maybe we post that on our blog. Maybe we send an email out about that podcast that links back to our blog, that links out to the actual podcast host per se. We'll think about the structure and the distribution of that to where we can get more eyes on it versus just saying, hey, we recorded a podcast. Let's post a tweet and think that the world's going to see it and we're in good shape. We think about the different forms of that media and how do we spread that out across those and layer them in together, if that makes sense. You're in a, a fortuitous place where you're working for a brand that inherently has a large user base, which means you have some virality, which means you have traction and people are constantly looking for not only what do you have to say about your user base, your, your new research, 
they're also interested in how to use the tool. I'm sure that there's plenty of people that are searching for how to do given things in active campaign on YouTube or finding your blog posts, your tutorials, your how to. It's interesting to hear your perspective of, well, we know we have audience. Here's how we think about content as opposed to where I feel like most brands and definitely earlier, less mature brands are, which is how do I start to get attention? You still need your content even once you have that attention to try to make sure that you're staying on top of it to make it sure that you're staying relevant and turning those eyeballs and ears into conversions. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Shay Howe, the CMO of Active Campaign. Join us again tomorrow when Shay and I continue our conversation talking about why unique data sets are the competitive advantage for the future in artificial intelligence. If you can't wait till our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Shay, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is Shay Howe, that's S-H-A-Y-H-O-W-E. Or you could visit his company's website, which is activecampaign.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com, where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter, and you can even apply to be the next guest speaker on the MarTech Podcast. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D, on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, or you can contact me directly on LinkedIn. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.